Hi, in this video, we're going to make a micro frontend application using Angular and Angular elements. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun of Heuristics. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, the framework and all about the algorithm. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. In the last video, we have discussed what is micro frontend and what is the use in the market. So today we will going to see how you can implement that using Angular and Angular elements. So here I have created a simple Angular project. So I will go and install Angular elements. So for that, write ng add then Angular elements. So here you can see that we have got an error that package Angular element was found but does not support semantics. That means what I have did wrong here, instead of doing ng add angular slash elements, I should do npm install at angular slash elements. So it will be installed in the application. It doesn't have the semantics to run the application. Sorry, my bad. But you will do npm install angular elements, but it is installed in our application. If you go to the packages and here you can see angular elements has been added. And here you can see our application is up and running. This is a normal application. So this is a normal front-end application developed by basic Angular CLI. But our goal is to convert this application to a micro front-end application so that we can use it everywhere and like we have discussed in the previous video. So first thing first, why we need Angular element? So you may have heard about web component. So web component thing, you can wrap your component and that can be directly given to the browser as a tag. So I'm just explaining to simplify you. So, so suppose you have your whole application and you can wrap that whole application to a single tag like we have our tag here. If you go to app component, we have our tag as app root, which we are using in our index.html to run the application. So you can think like we'll create a tag for our whole app that can be supported through the browser so the browser can render it. That's a web component. So that's the reason we are using Angular elements. So Angular elements gives us a power to make our application as a web component. You can make your whole application like a single tag element or single tag web component, or you can convert your different components to different tag so that in your parent application means where we are using the Angular element, there you can use your web component with different tags. So suppose you have a huge application, then that you want to convert to a micro front end, not huge, a decent application also, that you want to convert to a micro front end. Instead of giving a whole application as a single tag, you can give different functionality, different tags, so that the user, when they will use, they can use their tag desirably. So once you go forward, you will know that how will design your component so that if it is pluggable to some places like a cart application, just plug the cart. But if you want to add the comment, you can just, just plug the comment. And if you are developing the both the application in a single micro front end, then it makes sense that give a different tag to the different elements or sorry, different components. But in this video, we will see how we're gonna add a single component, but you can do that, it's pretty easy. So for that, what we need to do is in our app module, we'll add a constructor. In that constructor, we need to put our injector. So we have injected our injector and now we'll use that in our ng do bootstrap. So we need to bootstrap our application like we are doing it here. As this is a normal application, we'll bootstrap it here so that our main.ts will call uh, the bootstrap method and that will are, that you all guys know how normal angular application work. So we'll do the ng boot, do bootstrap. And here we'll create our element as a custom element. So we'll give that as a element and we'll use the create custom element. And that is again from angular elements. So here we'll use our app component to make that as a web component. So for that, so in create elements, if you go inside, it need a component and a configuration. So our com component we have passed as app component and the configuration will be our injector. So injector should be our, the injector we have injected it here. Now to create a tag, 
will use custom elements. So you can see custom elements dot define here. We can define our tag name. So suppose in this case, app micro frontend. You can give any name and you will pass your element which you have created here. So what I was saying previously is I'm only defining our app component as a tag. If you have a lot of components or if you, if you don't want to expose the whole application as a tag, you can create different element like this. Either you can copy paste it multiple time or you can use an array to define your elements by providing the parameter in a loop. So I will skip that part here. And in our app component, we'll go to the HTML here. We'll try to remove all the thing. I'll just add h1 tag here. So I've done that so that we'll see something different. You can see a problem here that we are bootstrapping our application here. Also, you are bootstrapping our application here as well. To just show you, I'll just run npm run start and now we'll go to the browser here I'll just refresh so here I'm seeing hi I am a micro front end application that we are able to see due to the application is bootstrap so suppose I'll remove the application from here now if I'll go we don't have anything because our bootstrap method is gone so if you don't know what is bootstrap I will just try to iterate it here. If you'll go to our main.ts, which will be the entry point for application, what it's doing is it, it is bootstrapping our app module. It will go to the app module. It will run here, all our ng module tag and inside that bootstrapping our app component. So that's the reason we have our application running. So that's the basic thing how Angular works. But as we are exposing our application as a web component to a different micro front end, so we should not have the bootstrap here. But for the testing, what you can do, you can keep this bootstrap here, run the application, test it, then you can just remove it and do the build. Why I'm saying I will let you know in the end of the video because this will going to help you a lot on the development. So please watch the video to get that why while developing you can enable the bootstrap and while building the application you can remove the bootstrap and so on as we are adding our app component as an exposable component so that we need to add entry components to our ng module so here we can add our app component okay so for now i'll just comment this now we'll see the fun part we're going to build our application now so i'll just run npm run build now the build is success so i will go to the dist folder we have our whole application but the problem is we have three javascript file and if you are giving someone a micro front end it should be a single file max to max two file one css and one javascript that's all so what we'll do now we'll try to concat all the file to a single file so for that we need to add a script and we're going to do that we can go to our root directory and here we can add concat.js and what we'll need here is a concat package we'll use the required concat and we'll add a method which will have all our file to be concatenated to a single file but you will say subrat we have our some hashing here so that i will show you how you're going to remove so that is a command output has to none so for now we are not caring about the css so we are not doing any css stuff but by by default you, you will have one css file you can give that to your user and that will be fine we need a concat package so for that we'll just install that so npm install concat so our concat is installed now now we'll go to our package.json and here we'll add a script called bundle so what the bundle will do first it need to run the ng build i think from angular 10 or uh, from I don't know the 10 or, or 11 onwards we don't need hyphen hyphen prod in our project so we need not need to add that you just use ng build and here we'll use our output hashing as none so what it will do is it will 
remove all this hash value so that you can make our own bundle pretty easily. After the build is done, we need to run this concat.js. So in our command line, we can run npm run bundle and we'll see that it's running npm build output hashing as none and concat.js. So now if we'll go to our dist folder here, we'll see that our micro front end application is created. We have our index.html here. We are using our app root in our index.html. So what I will do, I will remove all our script which we are using in our application. We'll go ahead and add our script and we'll add our source. And this time our source will be our micro front end application which we have just created but but the issue is we don't have app root so we'll go to our module and here with what we have done we have given this micro front end so you can do it in any index.html as i have this index.html I'm, I'm just using that as a reference you can put it in any index.html any angular application any react application any view application doesn't matter if it is running in a browser it will work. And here we need another thing that is to access the relative path from the browser, we need to run that in a server. But if you can give a absolute path, it will run accordingly how you want. So for that, what we'll do, we'll go inside our dist and inside our micro front end application. And here we'll start our HTTP server on port 4200. And this is what our application is now we are running our micro front end application in our index.html so it is just a html file which is running in a local server so if you remember in the middle of the video i have told you you can use the bootstrap module here as well why i was saying is suppose now if you want to go ahead and change some application is i was just want to add something now as we are not running the application in developer mode so that it will not be visible. So for that, what we need, we need to create a bundle, then see the application. So to make our development easier, what we, what we can do, we'll go to our app module and comment the bootstrap here, put the app component in the bootstrap. So I'll just run npm dot. So now to start our application on 4200 and I will go and check that here now you see we have our application running and now if i want to go and change something here like some value and save now if i'll go to my application here we'll see that some value is added so it is pretty helpful to keep the bootstrap as commented and use it whenever you want now if you want to export it uncomment the bootstrap go ahead and run uh, run your command start the application here with HTTP server just to show you again so do this again so we'll start our application again on 4200 that, that, that is running our new value came but sometimes what happened is it may cache your previous record so you can have a uh, option to add a hashing here or add a version and update your client according to your version. So that's always depends on you. But for now, we'll just go ahead and see how it there. So and in our uh, code, you can just hard reload it by doing a click. So this is how you can bundle a micro front end application or you can create a micro front end application from your real Angular app. So this is a very simple app we have created, but think like it's a very big app. You have a lot of modules, you can combine it, give it to a user or give it to some teams. They can combine your application and use your components or your application as a micro front end in their projects. And that will be awesome. A best example will be, suppose you want to create your own style guide, you will create multiple components. One is button, one is input, one is selector, like we are using Angular material nowadays. You can create that component, wrap that as an Angular element, give your JavaScript file, CSS file to your client. They will go ahead and import your JavaScript or CSS in the HTML. I will show you how, how to make that efficient. And 
you can expose your tag by your name button name something and they going to use it throughout your whole organization your application will look similar and the best part is you can put this micro front end in the cdn so that now the browser is caching that one so each and every time it need not need to download the whole cdn it can catch it from the cache and that is pretty helpful so now you can ask me so brother that suppose i have multiple micro front end now i i want to do it but adding all the micro front end here will going to increase my startup time we're going to see that in the next video how are you going to lazy load your micro front end it is required in after three four na navigation or it is not required in the beginning even if it's required in the beginning you if you want to lazy load it it will be quite faster for the user the experience will be smoother so in the next video we're going to see how to la lazy load the micro front end and also we will see how you're going to communicate between two micro front end so suppose you have your base application and three to four micro front end if you emit the data to your base application and if they will emit the data to micro front end so there will be huge dependency built on your base application so what i want to say is if you'll have a mechanism that will expose some data and our micro front ends can cache the data and act upon that and that will be pretty cool so that's all for today today we saw how we can build a micro front end using angular element for the case of angular obviously and how you can I wrap that using our concat.js and how you're going to expose them to a file and give it to your micro front end so that they can use that in their application so that's it for today we're going to meet in the next video till that stay happy keep coding bye bye